students to be here. Um, this is the meeting three of three, where I have been talking about the, the downstream analysis with Sarah and Signa. Uh, so in, for this meeting, what I have uh, done is that I'm going to work with the part to join RNA and attack analysis. So um, I'm going to start. Uh, okay, so to give a bit of context, uh, uh, this, this presentation is focused on the remote integrative analysis when we are going to join the RNA, RNA uh, aside with the attack aside uh, coming from single cell nucleomic data. So uh, in previous uh, meetings, I was talking about how these uh, several uh, objects uh, when we are working with several and SIGNAC is uh, structured, and also how uh, we can extend it to attach chromatin information, and also uh, what are the main functions that we have available uh, in the tool. So in the first meeting, we were talking about uh, quality control measures, uh, what are the main of these for each one of the assays that we have available. And in the second meeting, we were talking about the clustering, the dimensionality reduction, and how to find uh, some, uh, some gene markers. In this meeting, we are going to focus specifically in the integrity of these two, uh, of these two uh, different kinds of data. And we are also going to work in how to link pigs to genes in a concept that is called the linkage. And for do that, uh, we are going to we are going to implement this pipeline with RNA Studio. Uh, let's remember that these data are the next chromium um, genomic data sets. They are publicly available, and the data were processed with Cell Ranger R. And we are going to work with Cellrat version five and Signac version one point nine. Now, uh, the data set that, that we are we are going to, to, to work today is the same that I have been working in the past meetings. That is uh, a single cell nucleomic data set for flash frozen uh, human healthy. Uh, this is um, a data set that is for brain tissue and it contains around 3,000 cells. Uh, this uh, data set was a process with a linear R version 2.0.0. This is important to mention because if you are uh, going to try to implement this pipeline with, with data that were processed with version one, uh, possibly there are some kind of functions that are not going to work properly. Right. So you need to make some changes. Uh, here I have the link to the data. So I'm going to open it. And well, we here can go to the summary of this data set in order to have context. So we have here information around, uh, related with the, with the joint of the two modalities, but also we have information related to attack and to gene expression. And I mentioned this because some of the gene markers that I'm using to implement this pipeline were pulled up from here, from the gene expression uh, summary tab. So I basically, what, what I do is to go to the to the bottom of the page and just uh, pick up some um, gene markers here of interest in order to, to implement this pipeline. Uh, this is in order to save time for this meeting. Now I'm going to go back. Um, the next point to mention here before to, to show the pipeline is why, why, why we want to do this. Wait, uh, so we have here uh, the chromatin accessibility information. And, well, uh, part of the importance of this is the, the, the attack assay contains information about those, the regions of open chromatin. When, it's, uh, when, when uh, transposasa mutant EN5 is uh, excluding these regions and these regions are amplified in order to get information about this these open regions that's supposed to have uh, important regulatory elements that, that, uh, that are uh, highly correlated with the gene expression. So to have this part of information uh, plus the gene expression is important to, to have uh, um, more precise information about these regulatory elements. 
So this is important uh, in attack because the genomic features that I'm talking about that is the cis-regulatory elements or the trans-regulatory elements cannot be captured for, for the single cell RNA seq because this only measures the transcriptome. So the idea is to match these two properties in order to have the double amount of analysis in different features. One difficulty when we are analyzing the single cell attack seq data is uh, the issue uh, when we have to annotate cell populations. Uh, and this is because most of the time, cell type or states, uh, states are based on the expression of a specific gene markers. So this, is, this cannot be directly measured uh, for the attack aside. So that is why when we uh, integrate this bimodal integration, we have these two properties together. Now, um, for this uh, particular meeting, uh, we are going to combine the RNA and attack information in order to allow us to, to look uh, deeper in the transcriptional regulator of the region of the gene. So we are going to plot a coverage plot that includes the gene expression in these sites, but it also contains information about the region of the gene and also the peaks that are a highly, uh, that have high scores. And also we can see uh, putative links that are related uh, because they share uh, the same score of the same score in the attack site. Uh, this is uh, there is a very wide explanation about how uh, this is processed step by step, and you can um, like consult the details in this paper, the the Serac methodology paper uh, of how 2021. Now. Uh, we are going to do this, but I need to mention that there, there are several strategies to do this, not just one. So I just uh, want, want to highlight that because you can find tutorials when they are doing this in one way or another. So I'm going to briefly explain why it's happening that. Uh, first, we have uh, the basic strategy, the basic uh, processing that includes to build the several objects then combine the data sets or attach the chromatin information. And then we calculate some quality control metrics that we, with, that we saw in fact meetings, and we filter low quality data. In this point, we have, let's say, a uh, preprocessed data set that contains the both uh, modalities in, uh, in the same object. Uh, after that, we have to, we have to, uh, to make uh, the normalization and the dimensionality reduction for both sides independently. So we have several, uh, we have for RNA a couple of strategies to do that. One is the classic uh, uh, downstream analyze that contains the normalization to find variable features and scale data and run the PCA. But now for the version five, we have uh, an additional strategy that is called the SC transform that is uh, a wrapper of these uh, functions. So we can, let's say, have a shortcut to do this. Uh, but for a um, particular uh, analysis, we need to run this. In this case, uh, I'm running the, the, the shortcut in the analysis, and I'm going to show you specifically where. And for that, we are running also here the, the find the features. We are running a transformation and then a normalization in order to have the dimensionality reduction for the attack site. Well, uh, after this, uh, that we have uh, normalized our both modalities. So we need to annotate the cell types. So to do that, we can uh, we can uh, implement two strategies. The, the, the one, one of these strategies is to, to run or to integrate the two assays for the various negative networks analysis and then run the UMAP and then uh, find clusters in order to use uh, some kind of gene markers in order to annotate the cell types. And then you can uh, go to the link of peaks to genes in order to, to identify some kind of regions of interest. But if you have a uh, previous, uh, let's say, uh, you have a certain object with the annotations uh, done, we can uh, plot the certain object that is going to be the reference in order to transfer the cell labels to the new existing data set. 
So we can avoid um, some steps because from the annotation, we can make the interactive and then just go directly to link fix to kids. So uh, for this uh, implementation that I'm going to show you, I'm using the, the, the long pathway in order to show all the steps. But you have also this possibility if you have processed uh, certain objects before. Cynthia, yeah. if you do the find clusters function, do they just annotate cells as like cell type one, cell type two, or do they, yeah, yeah, they don't give any biological mm -hmm. name? Yeah, I'm not, we are not going to analyze biological okay. signals in this. Okay. Just to, to look to the implementation. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, this is all in the conceptual thing. And I'm going to, I have here some uh, resources that you can uh, read later. Uh, there are some tutorials that, that include different kind of uh, strategies to do this. And also there is the main papers for this information about the, how the algorithms process this information. Uh, now I'm going to explain the, 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 the script and how these uh, how these steps are implemented here. Where I I have this information in a, let me show you here. I have this information in the repository. Uh, just in order to let you know that there are there are two scripts. Yes, the one is the three join step one and the three join step two. I'm going to really explain the join step two because this is the bimodal interactive uh, strategy. But I left this one because this one includes how I process the dimensionality reductions to to uh, to implement the problem because we need the we we need that data in the in the file. So. As I said, we have the join step one. And basically here, the only thing that you are going to find is that um, I load uh, a favorite object experiment, sample, sorry. And this, uh, this object contains uh, data that has uh, quality control measures and that kind of stuff. And then uh, I set the default aside to RNA in order to run this alternative strategy for the for the normalization. S C transform, and I run the PCA. And then for the for the attack, I run the steps that I mentioned before. That is to find the features, to run the TFID normalization, and the run SVD normalization. So. For implement the, the interactive, uh, I'm running that aside, the aside that this process with this step. So here, sorry, I'm going to, to load uh, an object that contains uh, the PCA, the LSI, and the UMAP dimensionality reductions. So let's look the object. So if we look the object, we can see that this object uh, contains the, the SCT uh, assay, but also contains the attack assay. And we have also as active the, the transformation of the RNA data, and we have uh, three different kinds of data present here. The counts, the data, and the scale data, there are, there are the normalized data. But now, to make the interactive, we are going to work with the reductions. So if we want to explore the reductions, you can label, you can run this label, several reductions, and we can have the properties of each one of these reductions. So we have PCA, we have PCA for RNA, we have LSI for attack, and we have the dimensionality reductions for each one of these, um, of these layers. Okay, so now the, the, the active assay, as we see here, the active assay in this moment is the SRT. So I don't need to run this because it's active, but you need to be careful because when you save the objects, the last one that you process before is the, is the one that's going to be active. So just double check that we have present this assay and this is the default assay to process. Now, in order to explore a bit of this information, that you have information before to run the, the coverage plot, I, um, I'm plotting the dimensionality reduction for this, um, for the RNA, but I'm also uh, 
uh, making a plot of some kind of, of genes that, as I, as, as I said, I pick up from the differential expression uh, uh, tab from the experiment. So let's see a bit of the, of the, of the data. So this is the this is the dimensionality reduction, the UMA for the for the SSCT assay, and these are the four genes that we are picking up for this example. Now, in order to look at the oh, this this uh, chunk of code that I left here is because if you don't have, uh, let's say genes identified, you can run the find error, the find clusters, and then find markers in order to pick up some kind of market that you are more interested. But uh, in, in this case, I'm going to jump this step because I pulled, I pulled uh, some examples from the differential expression tab. Uh, and then for the, for the attack assay, I'm going to run this uh, default assay function in order to set the active assay as attack. And then I'm going to plot the same information here just in order to look at the dimensionality reduction for this object. So you can look at and we have, um, this is the dimensional, dimensionality reduction for the attack uh, acid. This is the unit. And at this point, you can look at the, for example, variable features in the attack object. For example, if I get ahead of these variable features, I instead of get genes, the variable, uh, most variable, I get regions. The regions most variable that contribute to this, uh, to this aside. So you can look at, some of these regions, just uh, plot in a coverage plot, um, just get, uh, let's say, uh, basic information about how, how this look for specific regions. So here in this point, for example, for these two regions, we have not, we have not for the first uh, coordinate, for the first coordinate, we have not any gene associated uh, that can be with uh, highlight with, uh, with variable features, with variable features in the in the RNA assign, but we have we have it present uh, in the second coordinate uh, that is the chromosome position one uh, for this gene. So this is very exploratory, a uh, very exploratory way to look at the data because it's not recommended just to integrate the data without uh, help, uh, keep a look in the modalities independent. Now that we have made some kind of basic exploration, we can run the modal integrative analysis for these two layers. And as in this, uh, for do that, for do that, uh, we have this function that is called uh, find multimodal neighbors. Uh, this, is, uh, this runs a weighted neighbors neighbor analysis. And what those is that it runs uh, an analysis that includes the within model and in cross model predictions that average the data of each one of the modalities, but also makes uh, like uh, a normalization in order to look at how much each of these modalities contribute to, to, the, to, the, to the building of these networks. So we need to take into account and we need to provide the dimensionality reductions that we processed before but in this case, as I have not integrated several samples, I'm going to just run directly in the PCA for RNA and in the LSI for the attack. But if you run, for example, Harmony or CCA to integrate several samples, you need to replace here with the appropriate name of the reduction. So you need to be careful here. In this case, as I'm just running with one sample, I don't need to, to make uh, changes here. So you need to be careful here. And these are the, dimension, the dimensions to take into account uh, for each one of the modalities that are indeed all the modality, all the dimensional options per the calculator. And this is the name that is going to be assigned to each one of these of these uh, of these uh, assays uh, that is going to be is going to be add like uh, like metadata in the object. So let's run this. Okay, <clears throat> now that we have run this, 
they have put, uh, showed you that Kevin, Kevin found 20 native neighbors, communities for each one of the modalities. And so uh, here, here are some important notes to take into account uh, that I mentioned previously, uh, the order of the dimensional reductions to pick up. But also I recommended to play a bit with the number of approximate neighbors to compute that by default it's equal to 200 or also run this smoothing modality that is less strict, strict or exigent than the default one. Now, what happens when we run this? Well, it generates a native neighbor called uh, weight and n, and it's stored in the neighbor slot. So now in the object, in the third object, we have an additional slot. Let's look at this. So this new slot contains a neighbor object containing the 20 native neighborhoods for the 2,000 two something uh, cells. But also it generates two neighbors graphs that, is, that are called the WKNN and the WFNN, which are stored in a new slot that is called the graphs. So these graphs is the ones that are going to be used to to, to find the clusters in this new integrated reality. So now that we know these new slots assigned with the integrity, we can then uh, run the UMAP in order to, to look at the information. And we are going to provide as input the weight and um, neighbors object. So let's run this. And the graph, the WFSN, is going to be used in order to look for clustering. So here, with this uh, function, find clusters, I'm going to assign the number of the grant name uh, where, I where I want to look for new communities that includes the two modalities, the cross of the two modalities. And I'm asking uh, to find communities with a resolution of 0 0.2 that uh, in the scale of that candle Serrat means that I'm looking for big communities. So I'm going to run this. And then uh, you want, after that you run this function, it's going to be add a new metadata in the object that is called uh, Serrat clusters. So if you look at the unique uh, cluster that we have present in the assay. We have uh, we have uh, a a clusters starting from zero to seven, and so you can look at the call names and you can verify that the information is there. So you have here the several clusters that contains information related with with the clusters identified with the cause of the two modalities. So you need to take also into account that every time that you run or do change the resolution of this modality, let's say to 0 0.8, that is the default, the Serrat cluster information is going to be overwriting. So that is why uh, the, in the metadata is added um, a, a, a new column every time that you run a different resolution of the cluster. So just keep in mind that in order to, to know what, what is the information that is uh, by default saving the Serrat clusters. Uh, now, uh, now we need to change for, we need to, to, to set as default as I, the, the RNA, the transformation of the SSRT RNA, uh, in order to, to look the information, how it looks now after the integration. Let's see this with the clusters. Okay, so now we have the, the interactive, uh, the integration of the two modalities with the number of clusters that we found. And these are the, the, the genes that I take uh, as an example to implement this pattern. So we can look at here and we can see uh, the presence of these in different kind of, of clusters. For example, in the cluster two, this gene, because I take information from the differential expression of these clusters. Now, after this, uh, just I'm going to do a rough annotation in order to have uh, more clear this. So you can, you can jump this to, 
And so I just renaming the cluster from the cluster one to the cluster A in order to, to replace this, the cluster zero uh, with number one. And we named these items and just to have the clusters uh, labeled from one to eight instead of zero to seven. And after this, uh, we can run the, we can, we can plot, we can plot the information that we have now with the same genes that we are using now. Um, just to look at this, uh, at this integrity with the, with the name, uh, with the name uh, cluster that we have here label in order to make it clear. Okay. Okay. Now that we have uh, the integrity done uh, in the in the dimensionality reduction for RNA and attack, we can link the peaks to the genes. So we need to change and set the default assay as attack. Uh, be careful because if you have active another kind of alpha and you are going to receive errors. Uh, this is not automatically pulled out. So there is a particular function that is called region stats that computes the GC content, region plans, and DNO nucleotide based frequencies for regions in this size and, the, and add this information as metadata in the object. So we are going to provide the, the object, the surrogate name, and we are also, or we need also to provide um, the annotation that we are going to use. So we are going to choose um, the, the Homo sapiens HG38. After the after that this um, information is is uh, processed or is computed, uh, what it does is um, just to have a scores in order to to highlight what are the what are the regions that are classified as peaks because they are Overwriting the average of other um, of other escorts in the in the genome regions. So after that, that we have this annotation, this uh, this new um, let's say normalization normalization data for the regions. We can then just uh, find peaks, find peaks that are highly correlated with the genes that are nearby to the to that regions. So. Here is an important point because when we run this function, the this link peaks uh, for each dream, for each gene that is present in the gene expression assigned, this function computes the correlation coefficient between the gene expression and accessibility of each peak within a given distance from the TSS. What this means is that uh, every time that we have a gene, uh, this function has defined uh, a region that is called distance. And the distance is going to run uh, upstream and downstream, and it's going to track uh, uh, genes that are between this, uh, let's say, this window, this open window. So you can change this variable if you are looking, for example, for cis regulatory elements that are uh, uh, outside of the, of the peak of the region. Or you can just assure the distance if you are looking for the most nearby properties or features in, in that uh, regions. Also, uh, these uh, uh, one that, that we set up the distance of the gene for the transcription scale size is computing an expected correlation coefficient for each one of the peaks, and the expected coefficient values for each peaks are used to compute C scores and p values. So we basically get a data frame. With information on the peak, the 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 features of the property found, and these values are C scores and are normalized in C scores, and we have a p value for each one of these. So, like this is high time consuming. I'm going to use specific genes to run this. So, the function is link peaks the object we are we are going to process the peak. Aside uh, object that we are going to use, that is attack by default. The expression aside in this case is SCD, but it could be RNA. So I'm using the normalization of the RNA. Uh, the genes to be used are the ones that we have used before. The distance is a uh, is predefined. It's a predefined value, and we are using a minimum number of ten cells 
with positive values for each peak uh, to include in the result. And the method to be used for positive uh, this scores is the Pearson, but it's also available in the experiment. So I'm going to run this. Would you, so SCT is just the normalized RNA, so you guess it. Would yeah. you ever want to? You I guess, why would you want to use the counts instead of the normalized counts? Yeah, you can use it too. So it's just like the alternative way that Serrat provides. Yeah. A, a lot of people use the, the normalized counts instead of the F. Yeah. Hmm. OK. Uh, now that we have tested, uh, that we have run this uh, function, uh, the testing say that it only found uh, gene, gene coordinates for three of these genes that I have provided. So how now how can we look at this? Okay, uh, in order to, to process the coverage plots, that is the visualization of the gene expression with the uh, regions, the genomic regions, where are the peaks, uh, we can uh, run this function that is coverage plot. But uh, this is also time consuming, so I'm predefining uh, a particular region that I want to plot. So I said that I want to plot the region for this gene with the features or the properties for this gene in the, in the expression aside SCT, as, uh, as we talked a I minute mean, I mean before, it could be the RNA. And the items is because I know that these genes are expressed in the cluster one, two, and three, because I look at the summary report. So I know that they are there. So, but you need to make more exploratory, uh, uh, you know, uh, explore a bit more the data in order to know this. I just pick up arbitrary from, from the differential expression genes and I know in what clusters these are. So the extended window where it's going to, to look at these uh, particular regions is going to be uh, run 500 pair bases uh, upstream and 10,000 downstream. So let's see. Of uh, the peak. Sorry? 500 upstream of the peak. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, it's because I don't run the items. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, let's explain this. I'm going to. Okay, so I'm sorry for that. It's going to be size. Okay, so getting back, we are plotting the region that uh, belongs to the to this gene, the RAN B B P L. And this is uh, the region of the peak that we are looking at um, additional, uh, let's say, uh, regulatory elements. So what you can see in this plot is that first in the, in the right panel, we have the name of the gene that we are plotting. These are the number of the clusters that I asked to plot, the cluster one, two, and three that you can see here. Yes? So then, uh, we can look at the gene expression of this. I know that this gene is expressed in the cluster three. So I just want to look at if I can see peaks that are connected or are linkage because they, um, they share similar S-cores and also to look at the region. So here in the, in the first panel, we have the tracks that are uh, showing where are the peaks uh, lying, the, the high efforts of the peaks. So we can see clearly that in the cluster three, we have three, where we have four peaks in a scale that ranges from zero to 25. This is a normalized count, so it changes every time that you run a different, a different gene. And also we can see here the genomic region of, the, of this gene. If you can also look the peaks identified that it means that they had high, higher score than the other peaks that are present in the asset. Uh, this is the, the score that is handled for this particular um, feature. This scale changes according with the, 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 number of the, the score that is handled for each peak. But we can also 
uh, look at uh, what of these peaks share similar properties. For example, we can see that this is highly connected with this one up here. And the, the color of the lines is, um, it's a, let's say, to easily identify which of these gene, which of these peaks have uh, more similar properties. For example, uh, you can see that this line is just to say, okay, this is the most uh, the most high property uh, in the escort that we are handled. We have here this that is more that, so they share a more uh, similar escort, and this is a light violet that it has a uh, uh, a less uh, let's say, uh, as pretty low property compared with the first one. Now, when we are talking about these properties, the extended upstream and the extended downstream, it is reflected here. For example, let's to plot this same gene with this same region, but now we are going to run the upstream uh, 10,000 Basis, and we are going to keep the downstream the same. So just that you can look at the difference between these two. Okay, so when we um, process these new, new, new uh, features that we are looking for a more, a more, uh, say, wide region to inspect the peaks, we can look at that these are the two peaks that we looked before. Remember that we see this peak this peak and this peak with the same property that I explained before. But now we now have an additional peak that is pointed to a regulatory element that is called the NAD um, something K2. So this is a very high peak that it scales in a range of zero to 80. So we can look at that um, there is a new property that is close to this gene even when we don't have uh, a link between these ones, we can look at more exploratory elements here. So if you want to see these properties together in order to compare it, okay, since this, uh, since this image render, I'm going to show you the, the last example. So now we are, we are going to go back to compare these, in, these images, but, uh, the last sample that I have here is just to show you another uh, example with another G in order to compare how I highlight the peaks and the links in the in the sample that has been integrated. And but but uh, more than this, that to look at these peaks and identify these link regions, uh, we can one we can wonder what is the next step once that we have identified uh, genes with peaks and with links that, that share the same escort, where the motivation to do this is to look at uh, transcription factors that are binding, motive enrichment analysis, and to build some kind of uh, regulatory networks. But for do that, we need first to identify these elements and to, and this is not part of this meeting, but uh, with this previous analysis that we are doing, uh, we can identify these factors that we can use to build this regulatory network. So maybe in, in our next meeting, we can talk a bit about this, but just to, to, to add something else, uh, to run the transcription factor analysis over this, anal over this uh, new object that we have, we need uh, to use a database of transcription factor binding motifs. There are commercial ones, like Danfac or Jasper, or also the third object has uh, his own transcription factor um, database. So just to finish with this, I'm comparing these two different genes. Uh, this, sorry, this is the same gene, but with different, uh, with a different window, uh, opening window. So we can see that when in a short window, we just can uh, focus our analysis in the peaks inside of the region of this gene. But if I run the window and I open it more, I can identify uh, some uh, other properties that are close to this gene. So you can use it for anything that you are looking at. And that's all I have. If you have some questions or you can, you can ask me here or in Slack or whatever. <laughs>